your source for everything paranormal. Para X. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Daughter of the elements, daughter of the rain, daughter of the thunder, daughter of the flame, daughter of the dawn, and daughter of the light, daughter of the stars, and daughter of the night, daughter of the earth, and daughter of the trees, daughter of the storms, and daughter of the breeze, daughter of the moon, and daughter of the seas, daughter of the winds, and daughter of the leaves, daughter of the elements, daughter of the rain. Stars and daughter of the night, daughter of the earth and daughter of the trees, daughter of the storms and daughter of the breeze, daughter of the moon and daughter of the seas, daughter of the winds and daughter of the leaves, daughter of the elements, daughter of the rain, daughter of the thunder, daughter of the flame, daughter of the dawn and daughter of the light, daughter of the stars and daughter of the night, daughter of the earth and daughter Welcome to Stirring the Cauldron. Now, here's your host, Marla Brooks. Merry meet everybody and welcome to Stirring the Cauldron here on the Para-X Radio Network. Now, before we get started, I just want to make mention that my website, marlabrooks.com, has been reborn. Talk about reincarnation. It's amazingly reincarnated. Um, It now looks like it belongs in the 21st century. So please go over and have a new look. Um, There's a full menu of things to see, including a new blog and a new news and events page that I'm working on now. So you can see videos and and things of what some of my friends like Scott Michaels and Tim Shaw and Bruce Tango are up to. And the radio show page is amazing. You can listen live to Stirring the Cauldron from there, or you just click on one of the banners for an archived show. And you'll be whisked away to my podcast page. And if you scroll down to past guests and click on their pictures, you'll be taken directly to their websites. You know, it's kind of like magic. Um, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. So go over and have a look and, um, you know, leave a note or wave at something. It, it's kind of just something I'm proud of for a change. It looks good. Anyway, back to business. Um, You just heard Daughter of the Elements by Lisa Thiel is the opening song tonight. And we are, in reality, all daughters and sons of the elements. And one of my favorite daughters of the elements, Judica Illis, is here tonight. And Judica is an independent scholar. She's an educator, a psychic, a witch, and and the author of several books of folklore, folkways, and mythology. And she's back with us tonight to talk about her new book, The Big Book of Practical Spells, Everyday Magic That Works. Now, coming from someone who wrote the Encyclopedia of 5,000 Spells, this book is a wee bit smaller. Um... But it's still wonderful, (laughs) and it's a great resource for beginners and experienced devotees to the magical arts. And beyond just talking about the book, like I said, which is amazing, Judica is also going to be taking us all on a little voyage tonight by way of guided visualization. 
And we'll explain more about that shortly. But meanwhile, um, I'm tired of talking to myself. So, Judica, welcome back. Hi. Thank you, Marla. I'm happy to be here. Mm, well, I'm excited about tonight because we're doing all kinds of things. I mean, I, I, I want to say... Have fun. <laughs> yeah, we do. And that that's the main thing. Um, and, and not like silly fun. People actually kind of learn and listen and, and get good stuff. <laughs> well, but, <not> <laughs> but, you know, I just want to say that this book has a lot more than spells. I mean, you've got a basic introduction to magic, lots of how-to things like cleansing your aura, protection from malevolent powers. Um, you talk about magical supplies and lots more. Uh, before we get into that, one thing I want to talk about is what people won't find in this book. And <laughs> that was one of the things. See, I, t- I, guys, I told Judica yesterday when we were talking that I always find something in her book that jumps out and smacks me in the head. And it may be something just kind of that nobody else might pay attention to, but this was the one that got me this time. Because it's important to talk about that. Um, There are lines that shouldn't be crossed no matter what. Um, For me, it's about the animals, but it's also about personal safety and casting spell in general. And um, a cursing or hexing in particular. And so I want to thank you for the page on... What won't be found here, and more importantly, let's talk about it. What isn't in this book? Well, animal cruelty, which is really my line, um, yeah. and there aren't inside fashion spells either. And mm-hmm. I, I, I have to, I have to. One little aside is, is that you're absolutely right. You know, it's not that big a book, but uh, here, here's the secret about publishing: the authors rarely actually title their books. Mm-hmm. Um, and I told them this book is going to be sitting on a shelf next to five thousand spells. It's not going to look that big. <laughs> but <laughs> quite a while I only wrote it. Um, I, what isn't in that book is any kind of a curse or a hex or anything like that. Partly, you know, because although there are in 5,000 spells, and that's actually an interesting mm-hmm. topic, also why why in one book and not the other, um, because I, you know, don't I'm not inclined to be the one who teaches you how to do something. Right. And also, I, I taught a class on this at the Michigan Pagan Fest very recently. And, you know, no one really needs to teach you how to hex somebody or curse someone. If mm-hmm. you are angry enough, you know, if you have that rage, you'll figure it out by your... You know, it's really the rage that is the energy for it. It's the anger mm-hmm. and the rage... And if, if, if you, you know, if you need to kind of think about how to do it too much, maybe you should sort of reconsider doing it. <laughs> yeah. You know. Good point. But yeah, I mean, I was, I was just reading that. And, and with me too, it is the animals first because, you know, people can deal with people. But um, I'm just... 5,000 spells. My book, for those who don't know, I have... Um, a large book, and it does have, you know, we count it. <laughs> it has over 5,000 spells in it. <laughs> really, this book, the big book of practical spells, is really, it has different spells. There's a little bit of overlap, but there are some different mm-hmm. spells than in 5,000 spells. But it's mm-hmm. very much a book on, on the spell casting process as mm-hmm. much as the spells. But, right. um, you know, my publisher was very, very devoted to the concept of having 5,000 spells, and I was Late, and uh, it was just it was hard you know it was I'm so proud of that book but it was a terrible experience writing it we had just bitten off more than we appreciated and um, it was it, amazing it was, and, and you, you know I just want to say that I had to I did a cookbook once and the publisher asked for 200 recipes mm-hmm. and I almost lost my shirt you know I mean I was just like oh I can't do that and then it wasn't long after that that I saw your book and bought it. <laughs> and, I, and I thought, you know what? She's crazier than I am. This is good. Oh, oh, oh. I kept, while I was writing it, you know, I, you have to be crazy to write a book like this. But I had a lot of them, you know. And that's yeah. how that book started because the person I was working with at the publisher knew that I collected them and I had shoeboxes on top of shoeboxes on top of shoeboxes. But I didn't have, at that point, 5,000. And I really had made a vow to myself uh, that I wouldn't include any animal cruelty spells, of which there are numerous and from many cultures all over the world. 
and it, you know it's a thing that was done and um i, I when 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 I was at 4,000, you know, 892 <laughs> and, you know, hadn't slept in days, I, you know, I, I, I will tell you that, that I was tempted, but I, and I'm very proud of myself now that I didn't. And that is very much my, you know, my line in the sand. I, I am not, I'm not going to teach you how to do the black cat bone. I don't think you should. And I'm not going to teach you how to do it. And, mm-hmm. you know, that, that's kind of, that's not going to be on my conscience. It, you know, because if you teach people to do things, you know, if you put things online, you know, how to how to make a bomb in your you know your basement, then mm-hmm. you, you have something of a responsibility in that. Well, and in in all witchcraft, we have a responsibility. People don't kind of get that sometimes. In oh, life, but, you yeah. know, transcending. Yeah. You know, yeah. witchcraft is an aspect of life, and everything that you do is, you know. You know, you know, not to be too existential about it, but you have to take responsibility for, for your actions, all of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, people. I mean, we can't tell people what's right or wrong because right. that's our right, right or wrong, not be somebody else's right or wrong. But generally, I mean, we have to go with our conscience. No, but cruelty is cruelty. No, yeah. yeah. You, you know, and and I, I I think that there are. I think we can argue about a lot of. There, you know, this is certainly not about someone who goes out and, you know, hunts food to eat. That's, mm-hmm. you know, that, yeah. that, you know, that, that's how people, you know, that's how we live. So mm-hmm. that, that's, but, but cruelty is unnecessary. It is. And, you know, it, it's, it's good that this, you know, that you put that in the book too, because I think sometimes people just don't think about things like that, you know? Well, that book was written before 5,000 Spells, and even 5,000 Spells, these were books that were written before the internet. The mm-hmm. first book that I wrote that I was really, you know, while there was social media, not not the internet, but social media, was mm-hmm. my book, Encyclopedia of Mystics, Saints mm-hmm. and Stages. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... Now, you know, you go online and you see all these things, and I, I think even more, you see all these things that it's sort of there's so much information, and it's very hard to weigh it out and mm-hmm. what's appropriate and what's not, and yeah. people tell you, oh, this is what you should do, and mm-hmm. I mean, it is, you know, I mean, among the topics that I do address in the book is, you know, you, you, know, you shouldn't do anything that makes you uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't do anything that makes your life worse. You know, we all have our personal styles of magic, mm-hmm. and clearly, if you are someone who who hunts, um, you know, if you hunt for food, there's no reason you shouldn't use the rest of the animal parts in your magic. But mm-hmm. you know, but if you're a vegan, or you know, or you're you're uncomfortable with any kind of death or body parts, you, you don't. You, it's, it's, it won't be the most powerful for you if you're uncomfortable with it. Mm-hmm. And the thing about the Internet and the availability of spells and all kinds of things on there is that you don't know who created them. You don't know who wrote them up. And people seem to think that anybody that has a website or is listed on Wikipedia or you know anything like that um, must be... Uh, somebody who knows what they're talking about. Well, I don't read reviews, you know, for that reason. Everybody's entitled to an opinion. Uh Uh-huh. Whether or not they actually are qualified to give one. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I I read other people's reviews, and sometimes I'm just, you know, just appalled and shocked by, you know, people with clearly from their reviews, I think these sort of extensive reviews where you can, Mm -hmm. someone with some background can see that, um, they actually have very little experience in there, you know, judging Raymond Buckland, who, you know, yeah. around mm-hmm. forever. You know, exactly. you're just, there, there, there is, uh, you know, uh, you know, we have to have a sense of perspective, and, and I, I think it's very easy to lose. You know, everybody has an opinion. Everybody's an instant yeah. expert. And, yeah, I, and the reality is that the more that you learn, the more mm-hmm. you realize how little you know. Yes, Absolutely. I mean, you, you know, you think you're smart, and the more you learn, the stupider you get. In a f- oh my sense. god, you, you realize how much information is out there. Yeah. How many books? How many people to learn from? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, it's overwhelming. 
It is. So we just kind of have to to do the best we can, you know, make the most of it. But it is it is difficult. Um, Now, this book, which people should read because you are an authority on what you write for yourself, um, it's divided into three parts. The first part is Magic 101, which is kind of like a primer, um, other powers, magical allies, blah, blah, blah. Um, I mean... Part one covers the one of the topics in part one um, is Earth Mother Magic. Well, this book was originally published under that title, Mm -hmm. uh, and also not a title that I chose. (laughs) And I I mean, I I do write about that. This uh, this edition has a new foreword, which was has not been in previous editions. And I write a little bit about the history of this Mm -hmm. book, and um, you know, I hated the title. (laughs) <laughs> I hated the title. I thought it was, you know, but I, I, I have this gigantic manuscript on fertility that had been turned down, but mm-hmm. someone liked my writing and asked me to write a general book on spell casting, with which mm-hmm. I mean, was something I knew that was, you know, they were not asking me to do anything difficult for me, mm-hmm. and it was, and they, they, they gave me the title and turned me loose. But I hated the title, but mm-hmm. I wanted to do the book. And one of the things is I really determined that if we were going to, if I was going to be saddled with a sort of, you know, it's an ecological title, Earth Mother Magic, how do you justify turning all these trees into pulp, into paper? So I I took it very seriously that I would write a substantial book. Mm -hmm. I would write a book that, that at least, you know, Attempted to be worthy of sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one is. Um, uh, you know, that, if that makes you feel better, because I'm entitled to my opinion, but maybe other people, you know, don't agree with me. But no, should, no. I mean, it, 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 it was. You know, it, it, it. I am very grateful, and I'm. You know, <laughs> the title could have been worse. <laughs> <laughs> I've right. always had a problem with my publishers about the covers. <laughs> the front and the back covers. See, I have been blessed with covers. My you covers have. Are, I have been so blessed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, and and I, I just I feel bad because the my animal spells and magic book. Mm. You know, there was this cute little picture, but um, of a little cat in a cauldron, which is cute. You know, a little black cat, but at the time, it just it it turned into this purple thing. That all you could see was purple at you. And I, I said, you know, I'm talking to my editor, please, can we do something about this cover? Well, we can make it a little less purple if that'll make mm-hmm. you feel better. I'm like, ah. Yeah. So here, here's like one of my favorite books, you know, because it deals with animals. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's like That's Barney yeah. Barney threw up on it or something, you know. And they're, uh-huh. they're, so you're lucky that, you know, I mean, Covers are more important than no, they're not more important than titles. But people no, are. No, but there are. But but I think people buy. I, I I do. I walk through bookstores and a cover catches my eye and I pick it up. Yeah, and you run and I from. Think that's what ones. people do. So. Mm-hmm. I've got a question from the chat room really early on, um, from Cater, and she wants to know. If you have any advice for novice witches or people who want to start in witchcraft, well, <laughs> want to do a whole show on that, right? Well, yeah, we could, but I mean, the yeah. big book of practical spells is actually it is. I don't, and it depends what you mean by witchcraft, because people that word, people use words that they assume everybody means the same thing, but witchcraft mm-hmm. is a yeah. multifaceted word that could mean many things. Right. So I, I will say that if it is the spell casting aspect, if it is the magical aspect, the big book of practical spells was intended to be a course in spell casting. And I always think I'm going to teach a class based on it one day too. Like mm-hmm. if I could, I, you know, I enjoy teaching. So, um, you know, the spell casting, that, that book is really, it covers a lot of different aspects, assuming that everybody's a beginner with something. Um, but but just general advice, find your joy. You know, witchcraft is ultimately about joy and about power, and your own power. So you know, not someone else's powers. Don't. There are many ways to be a witch. I've got a book called um, 
the wiser field guide to witches and it mm-hmm. goes through all kinds of you know all kinds of different kinds of witches with different schools of thought and different practices and it's just the tip of the iceberg there's there's so many more out there and different forms and you know maybe you'll invent a whole new kind of, of witchcraft mm-hmm. you know they've all been started by someone so why not why not new ones by new people today Exactly. To suit the times and to suit our needs, but that is to find your joy, to find your ecstasy, to to find your you know to find your allies in the world, whether they're animals or crystals or spirits or or elementals or whatever it is, and to 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 ultimately it is a path to personal transformation, to create the life and identity for yourself that you would like. Mm-hmm. You know, and so that's, I, and, and don't let too many, and I know that's kind of a little vague, but that's deliberate. I, I don't really like telling people what to do. I don't like mm-hmm. when people tell me what to do. I'm appalled. <laughs> Occasionally I get messages from people who tell me, you know, um, they have reading lists, like, you know, not to criticize anybody, but, you know, they're, they're, they're in a coven or in their group, and, you know, th- they've been given a list of books that they're, not ready for yet and it's like it makes me want to scream because, uh-huh. because witchcraft is about independence and it's about power and it's not about trading somebody else's power over you for anybody else's power over you mm-hmm. you know so I don't know if that helps that she said that's a great answer so yes that did help um, one of the things because all right I'm going to say uh, one thing that about Earth Month, I'm getting all tongue-tied here. I know, it's got um, so many names. <laughs> this no, is not Earth a bad one. I, I, actually, I actually kind of like this one. It, I mean, I wish I wish it was just the book of practical spells. It, yeah. it, it is a substantial book. It is. But but having written thousand-page books, you know, in five, not only 5,000 spells, but Encyclopedia of Spirits, and I, I have four encyclopedias that are bigger. Um, I, uh-huh. I, you know, I, 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 I try not to be a hypocrite, and I feel a little hypocritical with it, but whatever. It's there. Yeah, I, I have all those books, and I've seen <laughs> a great deal of upper body strength by carrying yeah, them. Yeah, they're around. bigger. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, it, it's kind of neat, though. I mean, I love the encyclopedias. I love um, everything that you put out and I'm not trying to you know be making nice to the Thanks. guest because I don't you know I, I get in you trouble know, I think you, you didn't like it <laughs> I would tell you I would say well you know what you so. yeah I would because that's what friends yeah. do yeah, yeah no you tell me <laughs> but no I do and so but this one there's just so many different aspects to it and so many things um, to learn and to to just kind of absorb in and so I'm going to you know, we were talking about part one, but I'm going to jump into part two because in part two, you talk about your magical allies and these include tools and animals and spirits and you speak of the ancestors and why spirits help us and their importance to us and um, thing people like, you know, Hecate, Freya, Baba Yaga, um, you know, all that stuff. But animals are also a very strong ally. And here I, we were teasing earlier about we're going to do something special tonight. And it's getting towards the halfway point. And I think this we is a good time. We better do it. Um, animals are our strong allies. And in the book, you talk about meeting our animal allies. And you have a guided visualization to do that, which is really quite simple. And anybody can do it by reading but um you know it's things like that are so simple that for all the naysayers out there who claim they can't do visualizations and they can't do meditation i kind of wanted to show you that you can for the most part so i didn't twist judica's arm but i asked politely um if she but would I love, I love leading visualization so i was you know delighted well, I didn't know that, so I was like, uh-oh, I'm going to ask her, and she's going to say no. Um, <laughs> but, so Judica is going to now explain to you what a guided visualization is, and then um, she's going to lead it. And so I want everybody that's hearing this to listen in. You're going to find out who your, hopefully, your your 
animal ally is through this guided visualization. And it's as simple as just sitting there and taking a couple of deep breaths and closing your eyes and listening. So, all right, I'm going to shut up, Judica. You you can take it. From well, here. a visualization is is a is a is a a semi controlled journey, and it allows you to enter other realms and to make contact with beings that maybe are not easy to contact otherwise. It is a technique. It's a, you know, once you know how to do it, it's an easy technique. Also, these things are done in dreams, but the problem with dreams is that for most of us, they're not controlled, and we have these incredible experiences that we can barely remember once we wake up. You know, it's harder to teach yourself to remember a dream consistently than a Mm -hmm. visualization. Um, Basically, what what I would like you to do, and I will tell you right before I'm about to start, is I close your eyes, take a couple of deep breaths, and just follow along with me. This is a short visualization. They could be longer. Um, There will be a spot in the middle where I will give you a little bit of time to experience it. And so Marlon and I will be silent and it's going to sound like dead air. Mm-hmm. So, you know, but, I, but I will be back shortly to lead you out of the visualization because one thing with visualizations, it, it's a journey to some place. And the one thing you want to remember is you always want to come back. You want to reproduce your steps coming back. And so if for some reason you are ever interrupted in the middle, you can just go back to it and make sure you you come out later because it's not good to be sort of hanging in the middle there. Uh, If we were doing this, I I do this a lot in classes. If we were doing this in a class, I would would give you more time. But, you know, we're already pressed for time as it is. I'm just going to give you a little bit. And for those of you who have a hard time doing it, you know what is essentially a group setting then just listen along because I'll teach you how to do it and you can you can do this whenever you want in a safe place in private is that okay? Mm-hmm. you ready? I'm ready okay so this visualization is intended to help you meet your animal ally I use the term animal very lightly because loosely it could be anything it could be a bird, it could be a fish, it could be some kind of creature no one has seen before. It, it could be, you know, or, or, or you know, a dragon, or, or an insect, it could be anything. So I want to leave that open to you. And so I'd like you to take a deep breath, relax, and we're going to start our journey. You're leaving home. Watch yourself close the door. All your responsibilities are being cared for. You have no worries to concern you. You walk with purpose. At first, the landscape is familiar, but eventually you arrive in a wide field full of grass and flowers. There is no clear path, yet you walk with assurance. Someone awaits you. You know where you're going. You walk through a fragrant field until you arrive at a thick wood. It's darker under the canopy of trees, but you look down, and right in front of your feet is a clear white path. You proceed into the woods. The fragrance of the trees is divine. Birds sing to you. It's dark but sunlight trickles through the branches and you can see your way clearly. Your feet know where to go. The path takes you deeper and deeper into the forest. You feel no fear but peace and self-assurance. You walk and walk deeper and deeper until the path simply ends. You are still deep in the forest. You look down and see a square trap door. You reach down and pull it open. You see stairs descending. As you enter, you discover a torch. A match is hanging on the wall waiting for you. You light the torch 
reach up and close the trap door and descend into earth. You walk and walk. It's cool and dry. Finally, you reach the bottom. It's dark here. The only light is from your torch. A path guides you forward. In the distance, you can see a faint light and you walk towards it. Gradually, it becomes brighter and you no longer need your torch. The path widens. Somehow, you find yourself under open skies, approaching a small, pretty shore. Peaceful water plays gently on the ground. Take off your shoes and wet your toes. The water is just right. Gradually, you become aware that you are not alone. Someone has been patiently waiting your arrival. When you're ready, look up and see who it is. We're going to stay here for a little while. You may communicate in any way with the one who waits for you, or you may simply gaze and share the moment. I'm going to be quiet in a minute. When you, At some point before I ask you to leave, or just when I tell you to leave, ask your ally if there is a gift that you can take back with you. And now I'm going to be quiet. We're going to start to go back, but you know how to get here now, and you can return any time. Bid farewell to your ally. If you haven't already asked for a gift, ask for one now. We're going to reverse the process and return home. Put your shoes back on. Light your torch. Go back through the passageway. Up the stairs. Open the trap door. Feel the fresh air and extinguish your torch, hanging it up together with the matches so that they're waiting for you whenever you need them. Close the door. Walk calmly and purposefully through the woods, through that lovely field, back through your neighborhood, and enter your home. And when you're ready, open your eyes. Okay, now I'm curious about those of you in the chat room who did the meditation, the the visualization rather. I want you to post if you saw anybody when you got down there, who it might have been, what it might have been. Just curious. So if you guys want to post, that's great. Um, you know, it, it, everybody's experience is going to be a little bit different. Um, some people might not get it the first time, but you can always go back um, to the podcast. It should be up um, tomorrow or I Saturday. Would like to, um, I, yeah, and you can take it and you know stop it and spend more time there if you want. Also, I, right. I would like to point out something with, um, I, I think, it's with any kind of ally, but especially animal allies. If this is something that's new, and I mean, I I did my first 
I remember when I did the medicine cards, you know, the Jamie Sam's medicine cards years ago, and mm-hmm. I was so disappointed. You know, I got a spider. <laughs> and, oh, my God, I got a spider and a bat. And, you know, we all want tigers and wolves and <laughs> just beautiful, dramatic animals, lions. And, you know, often, you know, I mean, one of the animals I work with the most personally are squirrels. And it took me years, and there's a reason in the, you know, in the medicine cards I say, don't do it twice, just whatever it is, leave it there. And Mm -hmm. in in years to come, I have learned to appreciate all those allies and and to, I'm grateful that I have the ones that I want. And spiders are so typically uh, allies for writers, for weavers of words, and... um, you know, so if you have something that you didn't, you don't like, or you're kind of disappointed, you know, you wanted a lion and you got an ant, don't. <laughs> that's most of us. And just explore. There is a reason it's there. There is a reason, and they're all sacred. And there's, you know, there, there, it's there to help. And you know, it, it's good not to turn down help. It's interesting. Jen's in chat says she got a tiger. Oh, wow, there you go. She says, what's with the pendant, though? So I guess it was a tiger wearing a pendant. Uh, Go back and find out. I was going to say, yes. Was the pendant a gift, or was the tiger wearing the pendant? We'll find out. Um, Got a 30-second delay, but we'll find out. (laughs) Um, You know, what was funny with me, because I was was half doing it, because I, you know, you always have to keep one eye on the chat room, but as... I was going down into it with the torch. All these animals just kept, like, there was squirrels and and bunnies and all kinds of things running around. And so it was just kind of neat. It wasn't when I got there, one just appeared. They were just kind of all around scattering like they would in the forest. So, But, you know, you you are a lady of the beast. There's a type of a goddess, you know. There's not one lady of the beast. There's a type of a goddess at the very ancient type of God who's known as a lady of the beast. There's a lot of. There's a great book by Buffy Johnson who collected all sorts of ancient goddess imagery, beautiful photographs. It's it's really. Um, I believe the book is called Lady of the Beast, and it's really worth looking for. It's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite books. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I, what you're describing is such a Lady of the Beast moment, but I think that's so appropriate for you because you really are an animal lover and somebody who you know writes about animals. Truth that that. That's probably it. Um, Jen said her pendant was a gift. Oh. So I just asked her what it looked like. Just curious. But she said... The are always interesting. She said, I'm sure it's supposed to be useful for something. It was gold with etchings, but she couldn't see what the etchings were. Well, she could see the next time she goes back, right? Yeah, you can. Or you can just visualize. You You know, these visualizations are so free flowing. Uh, mm-hmm. You can just visualize yourself, visualize yourself opening a jewelry box that has the pendant in it, and and really taking a good look. Visualize yourself taking it to you know a magical appraiser who's going to tell you what it means. Y- y- you can you can. There's this incredible freedom in visualizations for people who like to um, what they call incubate dreams. If you mm-hmm. start a visualization right before you go to sleep, often as you fall asleep, the dr- it will just continue. And those are, you know, because the thing with the visualization is you have breaks. If you find yourself going someplace really, you know, you don't like it, you could, you could just turn around and come back any time. Mm-hmm. You know, as opposed to dreams, which, you know, you're kind of, you know, you're being taken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I'm after. I'm going to call you after the show because there's there's one that I just okay. heard about that I'm not going to talk about on the air. Okay. Um, but you need to hear this, and it's beautiful. It okay. really is Thank beautiful. You. Yeah. So expect my call. Um, <laughs> <laughs> With pleasure. Yeah, but again, um, you know, visualizations are fantastic things, and sometimes, you know, what one person in chat said they didn't see anything. But when they got down there, it was beautiful down there. You know, I mean, they didn't see anything right there. So, I mean, okay. they didn't and, see and anything. It's a little abbreviated. I mean, we're doing it with a, with a you know, time pressure. You know, if I do this, if I do this in a classroom setting, um, you know, we could take 30, 40 minutes for this. But it's, it's, it's different on the air. 
Mm-hmm. So now you know how to get there and you know it's beautiful, so go back and explore. Yeah, um, I think, and, and I, I want to thank you for doing that because I, I think a lot of people maybe have heard the term guided visualization. Well, well I have but a never confession. Used. Yeah, I, have, I love doing these, and I, I do them for myself. I mean, and I write about them. I, I have visualizations in various books, and I, it's something that I enjoy doing, and I enjoy doing it for myself, and I, I enjoy leading them. But there was a point some years ago where I think a lot of different people were, were doing visualizations, and I, you know, I go to stores and I say, well, what do you want me to do? And they're saying, not a visualization. So I was so happy when you asked. Well, good. And you mentioned something. Um when we were talking, that maybe we could do others if people yeah. were interested. And yeah, I, I love doing this. I'd be happy to do more. Yeah, and we could, you know, devote a show to that so it wouldn't mm-hmm. be rushed. And, and um, because I, I really think that it's it's almost kind of like refreshing to do something like that. It takes your mind off of everything that's around you. Yeah. Um, it relaxes you and it opens a lot of doors that people may not have ever tried to open before. It is if you are doing any sort of spiritual petitioning and you, you know, it's often, how do you know they've heard me? How do you know? Well, you know, this is one way to actually, you know, see yourself, you know, going to, you know, going up to the throne, going up to the shrine, going, you know. I do a class on dark moon goddesses and I often incorporate a visualization into that one. And, you know, that, that ability to actually have that contact with the divine. And it, it, it teaches you that the method, the more you do it, mm-hmm. the better you get at it. It's a skill. Right. And, I think, and I think the more real it gets also, the more authentic and the more um, y- you, become a little, you become braver and more adventurous. And mm-hmm. whatever is out there in that realm, and, and we do, you know, it's, it's not... It, it's not it's not all made up, you know, that you're actually mm-hmm. going. Right. I, I think they, wel- they they recognize you and they welcome you and the communication just gets better and better. It does. It's kind of like practice makes perfect, but it's yeah. much deeper than that. It, it's just not, you know, this is, this is something that a lot of people, everybody actually should experience. Um, and more importantly, experience, but open themselves to be able to experience. And I think yeah. that, part of the problem that some people have they just put that can't that word can't can't do that you know for any number of reasons and it's a self-fulfilling prophecy it does and i was kind of testing myself today like i said uh, because i can usually fall into these really easily but i wanted to keep one eye in the chat room but at the same time thing i was seeing i was there you know and i was kind of you know my split for those people who have, if you experience nightmares, especially repeated nightmares, nightmares with animals, or not, you know, um, this is actually a good way of sort of doing a little therapy with it. Because mm-hmm. in, in this conscious state, you reproduce it and you can, you know, why is this creature bothering you? Well, you, you, you can ask it. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's your visualization and you can, you know, you, you, can, you can tell the, the big scary thing to become itty bitty. If you want to, you know, or whatever, you 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 do have that control, and I think it, it it's just it's just a super super beneficial technique. I mean, speaking to your ancestors, really, it just yeah. opens up the world. Yeah, and and you just never know what you're going to see, what you're going to feel, what's going to happen. But it's it's one of those things that I think is important to do. That's just me. Um, <laughs> but all right, so so we've done that, and um, now people can go and listen to the podcast and and um, redo and the that. The is in the book, and you can take yourself. You know, you can you can it, it it's it's in the book, and if you know if you prefer, you want somebody else's voice leading you, you can get somebody else to read it. Mm-hmm. There's all kinds of things you can you know it's. You know, the sky's the limit. You can do almost anything with it. There's no right or wrong way. And I think yeah. that's what people are always, really, am I going to do this right? Well, certain things you don't know, have right or I mean, I, I, when I wrote it, because I'm writing for a general public, I mean, it, it's a little vague, you mm-hmm. know, that the temperature is just right. Because I don't know how you like your temperature. I know mm-hmm. what I like. 
But right. you can, you know, when you're doing it for yourself, you can, you can be as specific as you want. You know, the water's cold, the water's warm, whatever. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is that... Um, I love hot weather. And I, for me, I used to, when I, you know, I would do visualizations where the sun is shining and I I was at Gaia's womb in, Wis- in Wisconsin and this lovely woman who looked like a snow queen just said to me, you know, I, you know, I hate the sun. And I just realized that <laughs> you know, we were, everything was fine until you said the sun was shining. <laughs> and so, you know, and it, so, so, but you can, you can make it whatever it is that you want it to be. Yeah. And that's what it's all about, doing it for yourself. You don't have to worry about pressure from others or anything else. Um, it's always kind of take care of yourself first and that's not being selfish that's just being smart because right. if you take care of yourself you can take care of others right right, it's right. Pretty simple that way now one of the things that we haven't talked about yet and we're not going to have much time to talk about but we're going to for a minute are the spells <laughs> they're in the book yeah. um now you were talking about two categories of spells the first is to enhance and refine our psychic potential and maximize magical power and the second category is to further goals and attain desires and mm-hmm. I've actually never heard it explained so succinctly because that those two things seem to cover all bases doesn't it pretty much mm-hmm. so I mean these are things I, I, I've i thought about forever you know all my life mm-hmm. so that's a lot of um, a lot of thinking and a lot of conversations over the years with different people so I mean pretty mm-hmm. much I wanted to um I think one of the important things is to build your own power. And that's often, you know, yeah. it's often reduced to, oh, you know, you know, money spells or, you know, love spells or something like that. But if you can find your own power and you can develop what, you know, we all have gifts, so finding your gifts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you can develop that, and there are various techniques in there, um, tools to help you do it, um, and... You know, if you could do that, then the other things follow. Mm-hmm. That's true. And you know, it it you get into so many different aspects. Of you also talk about when and where magic works the best, and um, you know, with the right intent and determination, you can always successfully work magic. But there are places and times that work. A little bit better than others so um, you have a magic calendar in there um, yeah. that talks about different things um, it's like swimming with the current mm-hmm. you know if, if, if the date is good if you are working with good ingredients if you have allies if, if you are in the right place if you're under the moon if you're you know I, it, it just makes things easier it's not that you can't do it without because you can right but it is a lot of work if you're doing it all by yourself. And mm-hmm. because it's all about energy, and, and you're using a lot of energy, and it becomes very tiring. And um, often you exhaust yourself, and then you know, what if you need to do something the day after tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Yeah, hang on, I'm just... I, to address I, know, I, sat in a, I sat in an emergency room with my mother, and I, you know just you know called in years ago i mean called in everything you know all my allies you know i i I needed help and i i did and when you've been doing this for a while you'll feel when it works it it takes a little while to get to that level of expertise but after a while you'll feel it you'll know it works versus when it doesn't work and that's Mm -hmm. when it doesn't work that you know that's a whole other show right Uh, but i was just exhausted, you know, and it was, you know, at a time when I really couldn't have afforded to be, you know, I did what I had to do, but I, I really couldn't have, you know, it, it wasn't the best time to be in that position. Yeah, exactly. There's always something, you know, when you have, when you have a situation, there will be another situation. Mm-hmm. It's true. But, well, and the other thing that you talk about in the book is about the realistic expectations of magic. Right. Um, you know, 
and and it's true. I mean, I'm, jokingly, when I was reading that, I'm thinking, oh, well, I guess that means that no matter how hard I try or focus my intentions, I can never shoot sparks out of the tip of my wand. Um, <laughs> and I can't actually conjure up the proverbial white knight galloping on the back of the white steed to swoop me oh, up. Oh, that would be nice. To the sunset. And then I thought, well, no, that would that's kind of mixing up my westerns with my fairy tales. But um, <laughs> basically, what it's maybe not an easy question to answer. There's no um, stock answer for it. But what should our 